Hello everyone. This presentation covers the ATAP capabilities regarding NFC 15-100 and NFC 13-200. The main topics are cable sizing and shock protection evaluation. The agenda for this presentation consists of two parts. The first part is conductor capacity and sizing of the phase conductor for both LV and AMV cables. The second part is the electric shock protection and thermal sizing of the protective conductor for LV systems. In the first part, we will be going over a brief overview of the standards. We will also go over an overview of current carrying capacity calculation concepts and the constraints to be considered when performing phase conductor sizing. We will then proceed onto the software user interface in which we will use ETAP software to perform a sample phase conductor sizing according to NFC 15-100. This slide presents some of the standards available in ETAP. IC6364, VS7671 and NFC 15-100 are all applicable to low voltage installations, that is installation with voltage level less than or equal to 1 kV alternating current and less, less than or equal to 1.5 kV direct current. IC6502 is a medium voltage standard and is applicable to installations with voltage less than 35 kV. IC6009-2 standard pertains to electrical installations in chips. Lastly is NFC13-200 standard applicable to medium voltage AC installation. The cable sizing section of NFC 13-200 is applicable to installation with voltage levels comprised between 1 kV and 36 kV. As it can be seen from the table, this standard supports a wide range of above ground as well as underground cable installation. Cable sizing is an iterative process because several constraints should be considered simultaneously. The main constraints are the thermal limit with respect to the normal operation for defining the cable carrying capacity. Cable and protection types should be considered. Installation method and ambient conditions are input data of the writing tables. Voltage tolerance should be evaluated to ensure proper functioning of the load for both steady state and temporary operation such as motor starting. Thermal limit for the faulty conditions must be verified with respect of the protective device tripping curve. Cable and protective device combination must be checked to ensure safety of the operators, especially for shock protection. The method used by NFC 15-100 and NFC 13-200 for calculating the current carrying capability of a cable is a table-based method, on the contrary to IC6287 which is a formula-based method. Table-based method uses a correction factor concept in which the base capacity value is multiplied by all applicable correction factors pertaining to the cable installation and operating conditions of the cable and its surrounding media. Each standard provides a base capacity value based on the cable type and the specific installation type. Correction factors which are used to account for differences in the actual cable installation and base conditions are also specified by the standard. Common correction factors include ambient temperature, soil thermal resistivity, and cable grouping. Depending on the standard, other factors may also be applicable. Factors such as thermal insulation, depth of barrier, circuit clearance, and so on. In addition to the factors provided by the standard, ETAP also provides a user defined factor allowing the user to add additional rating to the current carrying capacity of the cable. Now I'm moving to ETAP user interface. ETAP20 is used to perform this sample calculation. First, let me introduce this electrical system. Power is drawn from the distribution system operator. This is a 20 kV power supply. Then, voltage is reduced for a step-down transformer to 400 volts. The low voltage system is composed of one main distribution board supplying three final switch boards. 
The main distribution board is composed of one incomer with air circuit breaker and three feeders protected by a molded case circuit breaker. Between the main and final switch boards, the cables are laid together on a ladder. The final switch board is simply modeled as a lamp load of 100 kVA. Now we are going to size the cable connected to the final switch board number one. First step is to run load flow in order to calculate voltage drop and power flows. I select the load flow module and I run the load flow calculation. Cable sizing capabilities are included in the cable editor. So I'm going to briefly present the cable editor before sizing the phase conductors. The info tab defines the general characteristic of the cable, such as the identification, length, number of conductors per phase. In addition, the library button makes possible to select a cable among the ETAP cable library. For your information, the cable library is going to be enhanced with LV and MV cables for the French market. Physical tab defines materials and dimensions of the layers, such as conductor, insulation, and shield. Impedance tab defines resistance, reactance, and admittance value for both positive and zero sequences. This value can be picked from the library or calculated according to the relevant standards. In the configuration tab, you can add cables for neutral and PE. You can also define cell resistivity as well as cable layout, trefoil or flat. If neutral and protective conductors are in the same cables than the phase conductors, then they will be available in main rows, else for single core cables, they will be defined in auxiliary rows. In loading tab, there are three different loading current options for sizing of the line conductor. Operating current, this is the operating current value automatically calculated and updated based on load flow results. FLA of element, it's used to size the line conductor based on the full load current or rating of the selected device. And user define, if you have a particular loading current value for which you want to size your cable, you can enter it here. For this sample exercise, I consider the operating current value pickup in the load flow results. Now I navigate to the capacity tab in which we will calculate the rated capacity of this cable. In this page, I select the standard which I want to use to perform the cable analysis. I select NFC 15-100 to perform cable capacity and line sizing calculations. Next, all the installation types defined in the NFC 15-100 standard have been implemented in Twitter. So I select the cable installation type, later as visible on the picture next to the cable. Notice that the base capacity value of 382 amps is updated. This base capacity value corresponds to a base ambient temperature of 30 degrees and a base conductor temperature of 90 degrees as defined in the, in the table provided by NFC 15-100. Next, I select the number of layers and the number of touching circuit. The three feeders supplying the final switchboard are laid on the same layer with one layer of cable. So I select one layer and three touching circuits. Then I define the ambient temperature, 40 degrees. And you can check the rating factors for each constraint by clicking on the correction factors button. Moving to the allowable capacity section, three options are available to specify the allowable capacity used for load flow alerts. Derated, set the derated capacity determined from this analysis to be the maximum allowable current. User defined, you can define value provided by the cable manufacturer, for example, or UGS calculated. This value is the calculated capacity result from under system. In the results area, the rate itself shows the value of the current carrying capacity with respect of the laying method and ambient parameter. For this cable, the rated current is 285 amps. 
I jump to the next tab, this is the protection tab. In this page, we will define the parameters to calculate the short circuit current restand for the worst case. To automatically fill in the maximum and minimum short circuit current, we have to run short circuit current calculation in star mode. To run short circuit current calculation, I close the cable editor. I select the star mode. Then I select the maximum study case already defined with IEC standard and maximum C factor. And I run the full current calculation. We can see in the cable editor, the maximum full current have been populated in the protection page. To run minimum short circuit current calculation, I select the minimum study case already defined with IC standard and minimum C factor. In addition, I can activate the option for selecting automatically the cable end upstream or downstream bus with the lowest full current values. Then we select the upstream protective device to calculate the full clearing time. In addition, ETAP calculates the Earth's fault loop current considering current return for the PE conductor defined in the configuration tab. This value will be used for electric shock protection analysis. Next step is to evaluate all the constraints for selecting the relevant conductor size. This is done in sizing phase tab. You can enable the constraint for line cable sizing. The first constraint is loading. This is the loading current value for which you want to size your cable. In this example, we already select um, the operating current coming from the load flow. Uh, next one is max VD for maximum voltage drop. I specify the maximum permissible voltage drop for this cable, 2%. ETAP provides the maximum permissible length with respect to the permissible voltage drop. Apply power factor constraint uh, make possible to consider the, the load power factor for voltage drop calculation. Then short circuit. If this checkbox is enabled, sizing will be based on the cable short circuit capacity uh, to withstand the short circuit current magnitude specified in the protection page for the corresponding time. Minimum size is the required minimum cable size calculated based on the short circuit current and duration display in this field. Worst case is automatically selected among all the full currents displayed in the protection page. For overload constraint, uh, overload constraint is based on the overload protection selected in the protection tab. It have considered the overload operating current to define the minimum cable size. And triple harmonic content can be considered if required, but for this example, there is no triple harmonic. In the results section, ETA provides a summary of the line sizing calculation results based on all the constraints being considered and the cables available in the selected library. The optimal cable size suggested to pass all the criteria is one copper conductor per phase, cross section 70 square millimeter. Such cable will have a current carrying capacity of 200 amps. Um, 0.8% voltage drop. As it can be seen, the overload condition is a determining factor for which the cable size needs to be increased. Without this constraint, a 50 square millimeter cable is suitable. I select the optimal cable size by clicking on the select button for the next steps. As the phase conductor size has been updated, uh, I'm going to modify the P conductor size to help the new phase conductor cross section. This is done in the configuration tab with this drop down menu. ETAP has similar capabilities for medium voltage cable. I close this low voltage cable editor and I open the MV cable editor. 
the list of the standard is updated according to the cable voltage. For NFC 13-200 standard, the methodology is similar to the methodology presented previously for NFC 15-100. All the installation method and the rating factors of NFC 13-200 have been implemented into the cable editor. As the message is the same, I navigate back to the LV cable editor for the protective conductor sizing and electric shock protection. Now we proceed to thermal sizing under sizing for PE page. The maximum ground fault and disconnection time stated here are obtained from previous analysis. Etap calculate lead flow energy and required conductor size. In this case, the existing PE cable met the required size criteria. Now I'm going to present the electric shock protection. Um, firstly, earthing type should be identified. To allow automatic determination of the neutral earthing system, uh, in tools option, uh, earthing type determination in cable sizing section must be set to true. Neutral earthing system is TNS, as defined in the transformer grounding tab. And now, in the cable editor, you can find earthing type stated here which is defined at the source size of transformer in this case. Etap calculates loop impedance, loop current, and disconnection time, as well as that voltage. Next to calculated values, you have permissible values. Uh, as you can see, the, the calculated values doesn't meet the criteria because the calculated disconnection time is longer than the maximum permissible disconnection time, which is 5 seconds. There are two solutions. Solution one, increase the loop current by increasing the cable size. For example, I can increase the P size to the same size of the phase conductor, 70 square millimeter. And now the criteria is met. Calculated disconnection time is lower than the permissible disconnection time. Solution 2, uh, reduce the protection pickup. I open the corresponding time current curve. The loop current is in the uncertainty tripping area of the upstream CB. If I reduce the pickup, now the loop current is higher than the short time protection. If we open the cable editor, the disconnection time criteria is met. The cables can be managed as a whole with the cable manager. Etap cable manager summarizes cable parameters as well as calculation results. Almost all the information of the cable editor are available in the cable manager. It allows the batch management of the cable data as well as having an overview of cable sizing and alerts in capacity tabs. Export to Excel for post-processing and reporting is also available.